thank you parag thank you everybody for inviting me here so today we have uh, dr parag has done a very good job you know short crisp things and we'll talk about specific things we'll cover ra hand as a whole surgical medical and short crisp things any doubts obviously you are always welcome so let's start with first how does ra really destroy the joints and soft tissues as surgeons i am sure i need not tell you this this is something common but from the medical perspective what really happens does it really start in the joints what really happens let's have a look parag thanks so first of all does rheumatoid start in the joints or there is something else that happens we have a lot of insight now over the years initially obviously something that everybody knows it's an autoimmune disease uh, synovium is the target and that is where the attack happens synovium proliferates that is what causes all the problems but there is a lot of lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes predating actual rheumatoid that we see uh, unlike infections most autoimmune conditions are multifactorial it is a combination of genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers that you know ultimately result into autoimmune conditions so what happens in rheumatoid arthritis one this is the genetic background susceptibility genes there is a, a, a shared epitope called as hr hla dr1 and dr4 this is the shared epitope that predisposes somebody to uh, developing rheumatoid arthritis and apart from that there are specific environmental triggers which really get the entire ball rolling what are these environmental triggers rheumatoid arthritis doesn't really start in the joints the entire process happens somewhere else autoimmunity develops and then joints get affected so where does this breach of tolerance really happen is one in the lungs smoking has been shown to be a very very important trigger and a potential for for that matter not even potential a known now a known risk factor for developing rheumatoid arthritis secondly periodontal infections are again known to be a predisposing factor for rheumatoid arthritis and lastly this is potential gut microbiome dysbiosis in the gut all these things what they really do is these environmental triggers smoking periodontal infections and gut infections or gut dysbiosis they cause something called as citrullination of peptides in the body what is citrullination it is changing of arginine molecules in target proteins into citrulline this is called as citrullination this process is triggered by a combination of these two the granulocytes and macrophages secrete this enzyme pad enzyme and this is what causes citrullination in fact you must have heard acp or anti ccp antibody it is antibody to citrullinated protein antigens so this is exactly what happens in the body because of this trigger there is citrullination of proteins and these citrullinated proteins are then recognized as foreign this is what causes the breach of immunological tolerance and this is where the entire rheumatoid arthritis autoimmunity starts these antibodies when there is citrullination of proteins there are antibodies that develop to these citrullinated proteins and these anti ccp antibodies that are used for diagnosis of rheumatoid are present in the serum for 5 to 6 years before rheumatoid actually develops so they actually predate the diagnosis in a big way so these were the initial stages citrullination phase and then the maturation phase during the maturation the antibodies develop then comes the targeting phase in this the autoimmunity actually gets into work multiple cell types start secreting multiple cytokines and then is this fulminant disease or the actual clinical rheumatoid arthritis that we see as what the patient presents with so all this was happening in the background for many years before this actually develops now coming to exactly what we wanted to know how does rheumatoid actually destroy the joints and cartilages something that i am sure everybody knows because of rheumatoid what happens pathogenesis wise the normal synovium which is two layered intima and subintima gets converted into invasive panus the intima there is hyperplasia of the intima from a single layer it develops into multiple layer structure and the subintima there is actual cellular infiltration 
there is ectopic lymphoid tissue just the way lymphoid granules granules are formed in the lymph nodes the same way in the subintima multiple ectopic lymphoid granules form this is where the autoimmunity has finally homed in on now the synovium and because of this there is a lot of neoangiogenesis getting more and more lymphocytes and other cells to the synovium this is what happens inside the synovium and how can we detect it with investigations panus one it will be obviously visible as synovitis when it is not visible subclinical or obviously visible we can always pick up with an ultrasound or an mri the new angiogenesis mri will pick it up otherwise also when with an ultrasound we can always get a par doppler to see so when somebody has pain here i can't see obvious synovitis if i ask a trained msk radiologist he will tell me two things one there definitely seems to be synovial hypertrophy in these joints and with a par doppler there is synovial hypertrophy wherein there is angiogenesis that means it is inflammatory synovitis that is how we would you know uh, uh, help this with an early diagnosis this panus then starts infiltrating the cartilages and soft tissues leading to erosions and destruction and synovial fluid as well as the the lymphoid cells in the synovium have high levels of multiple cytokines particularly tnf alpha interleukin 1 these cytokines also stimulate the chondrocytes to produce cartilage degrading degrading metalloproteinases and that is how cartilage starts eroding so panus by itself erodes the cartilage second through this mechanism also it causes erosions of the cartilage this is something that is as far as the synovium and the panus is concerned where else does this destruction come from what is the role of subchondral bone marrow subchondral bone marrow also gets clumps of ectopic lymphoid tissue this is again one more place wherein the autoimmunity homes there is substitution of the bone marrow by inflammatory infiltrate and this is particularly picked up on mri as bone marrow edema so when we get mri of what your hands or any other joint one we are looking for the synovial hypertrophy second is the joint effusion and third will be this bone marrow edema this bone marrow edema is a forerunner of erosions so from this the infiltrates keep happening the they keep moving and this is ultimately what leads to erosion of the bone this is reversible so if we institute therapy at the bone marrow edema stage itself we will not end up with erosions so one the erosions develop from the panus itself secondly they can develop because of this subchondral bone marrow also from that side also now the migration of inflammatory mediators mediators and cells into the joint cavity from subchondral bone marrow also ultimately leads to inflammation of the synovium so there are multiple ways through which the inflammation ultimately homes in and how does this clinically reflect what we see in the patients obviously synovitis tenosynovitis flexor tendons as well as extensor tendons get get involved flexor tendons of the hand triggering and locking of the fingers apart from frank inflammation that is seen cts which carries a poor prognosis and extensor tender involvement especially if uh, if it involves the wrist the synovial proliferation around the ulnar steroid is associated with erosion so this is how the destruction the entire process uh, uh, really pathogenetically this is how it works i think and now i'll hand over to parak to go ahead with the Thank you.